The AC women's basketball team is back in action for the first time since making history last season, winning the Southland Conference Championship. It's the Julie Goodenough Show right now. Welcome to a brand new season of the Julie Goodenough Show from the ACU TV studios on the campus of Abilene Christian University. I'm Owen Simpson alongside the women's head basketball coach, Julie Goodenough. Coach, I'm sure you're more ready than anyone for this season to get started. Uh, after the success you had last season, uh, winning a conference championship, and playing the NCAA tournament. How do you envision this year going? Gosh, we're, we're just really excited to, to get started. We had a great summer. Uh, the, our preseason practices have gone really, really well. We're led by a tremendous group of five seniors. Uh, I think at this point in the year, you're just ready for a game. Uh, we are tired of practicing against one another. We're ready to, to put our team out there, play against an opponent, and uh, just see what we're able to accomplish this year. We have 12 returners from last year's team that had uh, just such a historic season, and so we're, we're looking forward to just riding that momentum into this season and uh, seeing where it takes us. And you are projected first in the preseason poll for the Southland Conference. Including that, you made history for the first time in program history. You received a vote in the USA Today Coach's Top 25 poll. With those high expectations, how do you expect this team to respond? Well, it's an interesting season for us because, um, you know, last year, obviously, as a, as a team and as a staff, we had really high expectations for ourselves, but no one outside of our locker room really anticipated us being more than just kind of in the middle of the pack for the Southland. Well, when your uh, name shows up on a poll or you're picked to be one of the favorites in uh, the conference, uh, then you're no longer a secret. There's a target on your back. And so we'll see how this team handles that. You know, we kind of snuck in the back door and won a few games last year that maybe we weren't supposed to win, but we're not sneaking in anywhere this year uh, with so many returners and with just a, a great uh, veteran squad with a lot of experience. We're not going to surprise anyone. And so our players are, are very well aware of that, that nothing will be handed to us. Uh, we're going to have to earn everything this season. We'll preview the Wildcats 2019-2020 schedule when we come right back, which features an exciting non-conference schedule. This is the Julie Goodenough Show. Welcome back to the Julie Goodenough Show. The defending conference champions have an exciting schedule in store as the new season approaches. Now, now Coach, you, you start off the first week with arguably your easiest schedule to start. Uh, but you get up to an early test early on the season, uh, the Horizon League defending champions, Wright State. Now, I know uh, from a coaching perspective and a player perspective, it, it's taking it one game at a time as the For season sure. goes on. Uh, but looking forward to that first road matchup, what do you expect to see from your team? Well, uh, you know, we devise our, our schedule uh, where we, we just want to make sure that our team figures out how to win ball games early on so that when we do go on the road, uh, you know, we've had some success early on. And it, it'll be a great challenge for us, uh, Wright State has had a tremendous team the last couple of years. They've competed for the conference championship. They won it last year, playing the NCAA tournament. So they experienced what we did last year and have a good group of returners coming back. Um, we're flying there. You know, that's a, a new experience for us uh, for with this, this team and this season. So we'll see how our players handle just the travel and um, just carrying themselves. Uh, you know, on the road, taking care of business, staying mindful of uh, the task at hand. But it'll be our first business trip. And, uh, you know, we will go into that just controlling the things that we can control. Um, we'll have a great scouting report prepared and a great game plan going into that game. But um, it'll be a big challenge for us. Really, really good team. They play really well at home. And uh, early on in the season, we'll see uh, which team is, is ready to, to battle. Your very next road game, November 26, you head up to Norman to play the Sooners of Oklahoma. Now, the Sooners didn't boast a very uh, solid record last year, only winning eight games, but it is a Power Five conference, none to say the least. Uh, when you saw Oklahoma on your schedule, what were your thoughts? Uh, we were really excited and appreciated the, the invitation uh, to play them, and we're excited about going to Norman. Uh, the entire state of Oklahoma has become a huge recruiting bed for us. Uh, we have found a lot of good players there. We're recruiting players that are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in the state of Oklahoma. So we are really excited about the opportunity to cross the border and have a game in their home state. And uh, we're looking forward to a, a big group of recruits and their families coming to watch that game. Um, 
Yeah, Oklahoma is a, a Big 12 school. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Sherry Cole and their program. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a huge task for us. It's our David and Goliath on the schedule for sure. And when the time comes, I, I feel quite certain that our, our players will be uh, ready mentally and physically for the challenge. But obviously, when you play the Power Five conferences, you know they're going to be a lot bigger and uh, a lot more athletic. Uh, they're going to be super quick. And so we have to figure out what we can do on our end. What, what is it that we can control that can counter some of the athleticism and the size that we don't have any control over? And your very next game. Hope you didn't make any plans for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving weekend because you have your biggest road trip. You head up to Oregon to play Portland the day after Thanksgiving. When you saw us on the schedule, uh, what were your thoughts on it well being on Thanksgiving weekend? This is the second year in a row you've played the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, what kind of implications does that have on your season? Oh, we love it. We always put a game right after Thanksgiving. We love uh, playing during the Thanksgiving holidays. And to be quite honest, preparing for a game over Thanksgiving is awesome because our kids are not in class. So we have freedom to work out at different times of the day. And it's really fun when we go somewhere exciting and uh, you know either a tournament setting or a one game setting where the families of our players are interested in going with us and so we have a really good group of parents that will follow us to Portland so we can have Thanksgiving with our team and with their families and we try to do that every year as much as possible um, it's it's fun you know it's part of division one basketball you know you're more than likely you're going to be with your team over Thanksgiving and not necessarily your extended family. Uh, same thing goes with small, you know, really short Christmas breaks. And then you hope you don't ever have spring break off. You want to be in postseason. So it's kind of part of Division One basketball. And, and I love it. You know that you're going to spend a lot of your holidays with your team and with your staff. And then you've got a big one at Moody right after that. It'll be a rematch with Tulsa. Now you played them last year losing 75-63, a close fought match. This time you get the home field advantage. How big of a game is this on your schedule? Well, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to play Tulsa again. We have a hard time getting Division I non-conference games in Moody. Last year we had one. It was the University mm -hmm. of Arkansas. And so this year we have um, a couple of Division I opponents coming in for non-conference. And we just appreciate you know, their willingness to schedule a road game with us. Uh, we did not play well at all at Tulsa last season. It was a tough road game for us. Uh, we just didn't respond very well. And it came after winning three games on the road right before that. And so we were really disappointed in just our, our mentality and we didn't have very much toughness at Tulsa. Uh, but they're a very well coached team. Uh, they play in a tough conference and uh, they beat us pretty handily um, at their place. And so uh, we're excited that we get to play them again and you know, playing at home, we're confident we'll have a really good crowd we will definitely have the home court advantage and uh, hope to get that win back from them. Looking at a conference play, last year you started 5-1 and one in the Southland. Looking at this new season, how do you plan on replicating that kind of success? Golly, that is so far ahead for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about our games this week. Um, you know, we, we really do just take it one day at a time, one game at a time. Uh, we talked talk endlessly to the point where our our players get sick of it, but we, we talk a lot about control, the controllables. And so we just, we take one opponent at a time. Uh, my assistant coaches do a tremendous job with our scouting reports, trying to share as much information and detail with our team as possible so that they can be just mentally alert and prepared for um, each opponent we play. The Southland Conference is such a well-coached conference. We see so many different styles of play within uh, conference and um, travel is uh, it's kind of a bear uh, we are the furthest western team mm -hmm. in the league so you know when we hit the road it's a pretty good road trip and so you've got to kind of counter the the travel and sleeping in hotels and that kind of thing um, so there's just so much that goes into play and we and we really challenge our players just be where your feet are um, you know we're getting ready for our first game and our second game right now and uh, we do want to enjoy these games uh, every single game, just one game at a time. We have five young ladies on our team who are seniors who, um, you know, this is the last season they'll ever be a Wildcat. And so we want them to enjoy every trip we go on, every scouting report, every game that we have. And, you know, this is the time of the year that I know our players are really excited about games starting, but I, I kind of want to pump the brakes because I know how quickly time goes by as soon as we start playing ball games. And um, I, I love our whole team, but, you know, our senior class is really special. And, and I know with each passing game, it's just one less game that I get to coach them. And so, you know, we're, we're just going to enjoy the process, enjoy every day of prep and, and every game that we have coming up. After falling to Baylor in the first round of the NCAA tournament last season, after the game you mentioned, 
looking into next season, you, you want to have a tougher non-conference schedule. You don't want to be a 16 seed again. You want to be able to, to be actually compete with these teams in the first round. Well, here's the schedule. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I think that we've done a great job putting our non-conference schedule together. Um, Coach Drew helps me with that, and, and it's really challenging. We've got good good games on the road. We've got some good home games as well. A good mixture of styles of play that will prepare us for conference games. Uh, we, we were actually told by a member of the NCAA committee, mm. if we want to seriously be considered as something higher than a 15 seed, we have to do something really special, win a game we're not supposed to win. We need to win the regular season conference championship. And obviously in our league, we have to win our conference tournament. And so mm. we've talked about those things with our players. And, um, you know, obviously you have to win all the games that you are supposed to win. But when we go on the road against a Portland, against a Wright State, you know, it's kind of a coin flip on, you know, who should win those games. But uh, we feel like, you know, we need to win against other mid-major schools for sure. And, um, you know, it might be considered when we go to Wright State, maybe that's a game that we're not really supposed to win. Maybe that's a game that, you know, we win it that game and, and that makes a difference to the committee. So, um, again, another reason why we just need to take it one game at a time. There is so much that goes into a single game preparation. And unlike a sport like football where they have the whole week to get ready, um, you know, we'll have a game on Wednesday and we turn around, we have a get another game on Saturday, maybe completely different scouting reports. And so we ask a lot of our players to, uh, you know, learn all of this material, be ready to follow through an action in the game. And then the very next day, get rid of all of that and start over with the new prep. And so you know, there's a lot that goes into to preparing every week and for every game, but uh, we're excited it's here, excited for the games to start. Lots to look forward to this season. For the full schedule, you can visit acusports.com. We'll be right back as we take a look at a few key players going into a new season. This is the Julie Good Enough Show. Welcome back to the Julie Good Enough Show. The Wildcats find themselves in a very unusual situation. After winning a conference championship a season ago, that championship team is almost 100% intact. ACU had just one senior last year, Sarah Williamson. Coach, while it's nice to have most of the team back from a season ago, Sarah was a big part of that team. I mean, shooting over 60% from the field. How big of a loss is she as a player and a leader? Uh, Sarah was with us for four years, and her senior year was by far the, the most outstanding season of her career. Uh, she was, uh, you know, our leading scorer on multiple occasions. She was so difficult to defend. Uh, she did, she was not known as a strong three-point shooter, but if you allowed her to get the ball in the paint, she was pretty crafty and she knew how to score as well as find open shooters. Um, she led the conference in field goal percentage. That's a, that's a big loss and that's, that's tough to do as a perimeter player and she was able to do that, but she just uh, crafted her game where she was pretty elusive on the drive and uh, just did a tremendous job for us last year. Uh, I will tell you one thing that I've, I've really missed uh, about Sarah so far, and we haven't played a, g a game yet, is uh, she's, she was pretty loud, and she l used lots of words in practices and in the games, and so we are missing her vocal leadership right now. And I don't know that anyone has really emerged as a vocal leader like Sarah because she didn't care if she stepped on your toes. She was just going to say whatever she thought our team needed to hear. And so it'll be interesting as, as the season rolls um, comes through, uh, you know, who, who's it going to be? Who's going to be the person talking loudest during timeouts and, you know, rallying the troops when we have some adversity in the games? Looking at the positives, you bring back your leading scorer, Brianna Wright. She's big at the free throw line, 88% last year. She's been consistent there all of her time at college. And she also has been able to show off her three-point shooting recently after last season, really improving that ability to shoot from deep. What are you expecting from her you know, this season uh, as, being, as coming back really as the big centerpiece uh, for your team at the guard position? Uh, you know, Bree started as a freshman. She started her entire career. Uh, she's had to carry the load of this team for too long. No player should have to uh, lead her team as long as she has. She's just been tremendous. Um, my expectation for her is for her to have a conference MVP caliber season. That's what I expect of her, her senior year. I think that she uh, should have a sense of urgency every day in practice and every game. Um, she's a tremendous scoring threat for us, tremendous three-point shooter. Uh, her goal is to lead the league in free throw percentage. It's so funny, you know, she'll 
miss a free throw and she just gets so aggravated about mm -hmm. it because she would like to average about 90% from the free throw line. But she scores at all different levels. Um, I, I don't know how teams decide how they're going to guard her because uh, she demands so much attention. She can score in a lot of different ways. And she's a tremendous distributor as well. She finds her open teammates and she rewards them for getting open. Um, so she's, she's good in, in every s stat line. I mean, you can count on her to have good games, and that's just who she is. And so we're expecting a lot of, out of her this season, but I don't know that I could put – higher expectations on her than she's already put on her own shoulders. And leading the team in rebounds last season, Lexi Duque and Michaela Mabry. And honestly, Dominique Golightly also heavily involved both, all of them averaging over five rebounds a game last season. What are you expecting from these players on the defensive side? Well, Dom needed some help in rebounding. She was our leading rebounder as a sophomore, and it just should not have been that way. And so she had a lot of help last year with Michaela and Lexi Duque. Uh, they were a great rebounding trio. Uh, we were the toughest rebounding team in the conference, a uh, really good offensive rebounding team as well as defensive rebounding team. And those three uh, just did a tremendous job with that. Um, Lexi Duque came a long way uh, last season. Uh, you know, it was our, her first year with us. And I think she continued to improve and just uh, gain more confidence as the season rolled on. She was a little bit inconsistent in scoring. And that's, I think that's why she was not an all-conference player at the end of the year last year. But, um, you know, she really wants to average a double-double this season, and I don't know why she wouldn't be able to. Great rebounder. Um, she has improved her perimeter scoring. She can get to the free throw line, score with her back to the basket. Um, and then Michaela is uh, a little different than, than Lexi because she does most of her damage from the three-point line. But mm -hmm. she, in our uh, style of play, she's a post player as well, but just a, you know, just sniper from the three-point line. I mean, if you lose her, she's going to knock a three-point shot down. Uh, but she's a good rebounder as well, really strong, uh, crashes the boards hard, um, hard to move her out of position once she gets po uh, positioned. So, um, yeah, we, we have a, a really good group of returners that had successful seasons last year, and we expect them to be even a little bit better this year than they were last year. And while we're talking on the post, looking on the bench, you have a senior now six foot four Lexi Kurgan now she went off against Baylor four for five ten points looking at this from the NCAA tournament perspective she leads Wildcats in points for for the NCAA tournament yes, history so far yep, she as does. a Wildcat <laughs> now she didn't play a whole lot last year uh, but should we expect that to change going into this season well and um, I will say she's had the best preseason that she's ever had as a Wildcat um, she has been really strong she's demanded the basketball in the paint uh, we have a, a great scout team that works out with our team a couple of days a week, and she's done a great job posting up our male scout players who are doing a great job trying to get around and keep her from catching the ball inside. And uh, she's made huge strides this fall, and we, we really need her to be a part of our post rotation. And, you know, her size gives her a huge advantage. Uh, we expect for her to be a consistent scorer and, um, and also help us in the rebounding category as well. And we've taken a look at a lot of the seniors on this team, but one player that is going to be on the court for the first time as a Wildcat, Anna McLeod, after sitting out last season due to transfer rules, she's back now. She'll be in purple and white for the first time uh, this season. And what are you expecting from her to see, uh, to I guess, be the only new addition to the team this year? What are you expecting from her? Yeah, Anna is such a great addition to our team. Uh, she's a tremendous three-point shooter. Um, but don't sleep on her drives. Uh, she's really crafty when she gets a ball in the paint. Uh, she is figuring out how to play our style of defense. And because of her length, she's able to create um, some deflections and some steals. Um, she breaks up passes pretty frequently in, pa in practice because of her length. So she's a good defensive player as well and um, really good addition. She is a junior academically, but we, um, or she's a senior academically, but we have her for two more seasons. And just her uh, maturity has been welcomed as well. You know, when you lose a veteran player like Sarah and you're looking for someone to kind of fill that void, um, it's not gonna happen with a freshman necessarily. And so it's been nice to, to have Anna kind of slip in and um, uh, fill that void a little bit. Last segment, you talked about a leader stepping up with Sarah being gone. Now, you have a lot of seniors on this team. What's it going to take for that leader to step up with that upperclassman level that you have? Yeah, so um, on our squad, we have nine juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been interesting kind of following the leadership dynamic on our team. And, of course, everything's great right now. We are undefeated. No one's concerned about playing time. But once we start playing games, I think that's when we will see the real leadership for this team uh, rise to the top. All right.
It is basketball season once more. The Wildcats begin their quest of defending its Southland Conference title tonight against McMurray and Moody at 5.30. The men also start a new season against Arlington Baptist following the conclusion to the women's game. You can watch both season openers on ESPN+. For Coach Goodenough and myself and the ACU TV crew, I'm Owen Simpson. Thanks for watching the Julie Goodenough Show. We'll see you right here next time.